As a human being, we have the ability to think and to act and to will, but we also find ourselves being pushed about by desires and forces around us, usually internal urges, appetites, desires. They're probably as much in control of us as our desire to do something different. And in fact, as Shakespeare put it, all the world's a stage and the men and women are only players, but it's more than just a stage for us to act our part in. It's also a kind of a battleground. It's a battleground whereby um, you are wanting maybe to do one particular thing and your desires and your uh, feelings and your emotions may pull you in a different direction. In fact, you might say that the essence or the the really existence part of, of being a human being is the focus on that battleground. Take a, an obvious example, you know, you, you want to lose some weight, you want to, um, to make yourself fit after maybe a Christmas or an Easter or sometime like that. And so you decide that you're going to go on a diet of some kind. You're going to cut back on the food intake. All right, you've made up your mind. That's your choice. That's what you will to do. But is it easy to do? Not at all, no, because, you know, those cream donuts and those cakes and that delicious Chinese takeaway, they all pull on you. And there's, there you find yourself in the, the very crux of a battle whereby the thing that you want to do is the very thing that you cannot do. And there are many people who maybe their even their lives depend upon them losing weight or their health depends upon it. And even then, with the strongest will, they can't carry out what they plan to do. It seems to me that's the existential problem of the human being. The desire to do various things or the will to do various things coupled with the desire to do the opposite or not to do those things. I think we find ourselves in that battle pretty well all the time. And when I sit back and think about it, not just about myself, but about all those people I see around me, I would say that very, very little of what we do is governed by our will, by what we want to do, what we plan to do, what we aim to do. And most of what we do is probably planned for us and controlled for us by that part of our being which is pulling us in different directions. Maybe 90%, maybe 99% of what we do is not what we will to do but what we find most convenient, what we find the easiest, what we find the most beguiling or the happiest or the most desirable. And therefore we don't exercise much control within our, even our own lives. And that's an interesting point because then you ask yourself, well, what is the point of existence if you can't even do the things that you want to do? Because there are things inside you which are at war with the things that you want to do. So it seems to me that although dieting is a small little thing, you might say, well, whether I eat a donut or not, does that really make a difference? I think it focuses this whole uh, attention upon the existence of human beings and what it is that one should seek to be doing. It seems to me that on that stage of life that Shakespeare wrote about, it's that battle between what you want to do and or what you desire to do and what you will to do and all these other factors which are bubbling around within you and outside of you pulling you in opposite directions. And it's at that single point and at those kinds of points when you can maybe say in the face of all of that pressure and desire and appetite to say, no, actually, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do this instead. I think it's at that point that you exercise some part of you 
which justifies your existence, which justifies you as a human being, which justifies your choices. When you see what most people do when they, with their lives, it's often merely the case that you might just do everything that you want to do purely for convenience and comfort. You might come in and spend most of your time watching football on the television or drinking lager and um, having a, a time which is just relaxing all the time. You might want to lie in bed all the time. Whatever it may be, it's, it's, these are the desires that pull you in a particular direction. But the will and being able to hold out against those desires, I think that shows something which we might call character, something which might show that shows that you're more in control of your life than your life is in control of you. And really that's got to be probably the starting point for anybody who wants to set out in a direction that they want to go. They want to be able to put aside certain easy things, certain desirable things, in order to do the thing which they feel they ought to do, or want to do, or is right to do, and to follow the truth that they feel they wish to follow. It's not so easy to do. You have to be able to control all of those other impulses which are pulling you elsewhere. You know you want to write a book or a novel and yet there are a thousand different things which will pull you away from that and distract you from it. You want to have an athletic career, be a runner or a tennis player, but there are many things where you'd rather sit down and eat things and watch the television instead. And it's at that single point, that tiny focus, that, that battle between what you want to do, what you will to do, and what your desires are, are pulling you to a different, um, different direction. It's at that point, and at that point only, that you can exert, exert your independence, exert your humanity, exert your human will. And I think some people never get to that point. I think some people never, ever get to the point of controlling their lives. They always allow their lives to control them. And although they may have goals and aims and ambitions, they never get to act them out or never get to plan them or move them. Well, I mean, they might plan them, but they don't actually get to carry them out because they're not in control of their lives any more than, well, their desires are more in control of them. So I think one of the crucial elements of being a functioning, existing human being is to learn to exert control of your life and to do the things which your will decides you will do rather than what your desires will tell you to do. And I think if you start down that route, you could start on small things like um, if I decide I don't wish to eat um, badly, I want to, to be healthy, then you have to put aside those things which are attractive to you and, 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 um, and deny yourself those things. Let's call it sacrifice. Sacrifice is that ability to, um, as someone put it, make a bargain with the future, that you want something ahead of you, which you're willing to give something up at the present time in order to get to that future event and that that um, that better state but you can start with the smaller things and then you can end up getting bigger and bigger i suppose if you're looking for the perfect um, example of how it is that you can control your life rather than have your life control you i suppose you're looking for bigger and bigger sacrifices and at the end of the the road i suppose the best example of that you'll find is someone who is able to exercise their will over every single desire that comes their way and can forge a course which they know they want to go down rather than one which others are or other things are pulling them down. And I think that uh, at the end of that road, if anyone, was, anyone ever gets there, at the end of the road where you have so strengthened your will, strengthened your character, strengthened through habit and, and control and, and discipline 
to be able to run your life for yourself as you wish to run it and not be the slave of passions and desires, then I think that the ultimate expression of that is someone who is able at the last instance to even put the will and their principle and their aims and their goals of life even before well life itself and there have been many examples of people who have even given up their lives or sacrificed their lives for the sake of a principle or a goal or an aim which they knew in themselves to be right but you never get to that point unless you can start off on that journey as someone once put it no greater love has anyone that they can lay down their life for their friends and that's a kind of survival instinct in human beings that we will cling on to life itself with the strongest possible tenacity that we can possibly have and yet if you can as some of the um the the greatest philosophers and and um uh, wisest men have said if you can put all of those things to one side even the love of living itself then maybe it's only through that kind of act that you can really find yourself to be alive <laughs>